Okay, so we want to do our first drain down. So the first thing we need to do is turn off the mains water stopcock here. Now you may wonder about draining the drain valves underneath the property. Well, the good news is, is that we don't need them using flow. So you can easily disconnect them. Remember, flow is going to push the water out of each outlet inside and not through these drain valves. That said, if they are still connected, you'll want to drain them for now until you do disconnect them. So in the fitting flow chapter of the DVD that comes with flow, I'll show you how you can disconnect those and this will save you from climbing underneath the property. Also, if your stop valve is awkward to get at, I'll also show you how you can move that to an easier location also. So I'll just turn off the water here and then we'll make sure that all open outlets inside and out are closed. And that's it. Okay, we've made sure that the mains water stopcock and all taps or faucets have been turned off. And very importantly, that the boiler is unplugged and that the toilets have not been flushed. This all makes sure that the system is airtight. So it's time now to do our first drain down. Now, when you switch flow on for the first time in any drain down, it will only take about three to five seconds to build up air pressure and then it will stop. Now, this might seem a little short, but it's perfectly normal. Remember, your system is full of water, so there isn't much in the way of space for air to be pushed in at this point. But when we drain this first outlet, it will clear enough water from the pipes initially to allow much more air to be pushed in, and this is what gives us a better drain down. Now after this first outlet, it then takes about 20 to 40 seconds to fill the system with air, and this time will increase gradually by a few seconds after you drain each outlet. Now when we're finished, I always like to go back to the first outlet to drain it again, just to make sure that it's cleared. Now if you find that flow has been running for about a minute without stopping, you'll probably have an air leak. So you should switch flow off and watch our troubleshooting chapter on the DVD. Now while you remember, there are vents on the side of flow here as you can see. Now these vents allow air to be drawn in where it is then compressed. Now it's that compressed air that is pushed into the water system. So it's very important not to cover these vents with any coats etc because you'll just starve it of air and make it overheat. Now that said if it does overheat it will just stop so let it cool down for let's say 15 minutes and then switch it back on again. Okay so just for demo purposes I'll let you hear flow do the first couple of compressions so you'll know what I mean about the times. So let's just switch flow on. So I counted about three or four seconds there. So it's now time to go and drain our first outlet. So now that flow has built up air pressure in the water system, we're ready now to drain down our first tap or faucet. Now, although I'm going to drain the cold tap to begin with, it really doesn't matter which outlet you drain first. I usually do the cold first and then the hot as I move around the property, but it helps you to remember which one you drained last. Now I'm also going to use this jug and basin here to measure the water, just to give you an idea of how much water is actually in the system. Now as I drain the first outlet, you will hear flow start up again. And this is because it is sensed that the air pressure in the system has dropped. And you can hear it topping up with pressure as I speak to you. Now when this does start up again, just keep the outlet open and let it push out any remaining water in the pipe. Now when the outlet is dry, we'll turn it off again and let flow build up its air pressure one more time. Now it's worth carrying a little face cloth with you as you move around. When the last of the water has been pushed out of any of the sink outlets in particular, there is usually a spurt of water. So if you just wrap the face cloth around the end of the tap, what it will do is it will absorb the water and stop it from splashing around the worktops uh, and more importantly yourself. So let's just uh, drain this first tap. So I'm going to lift my jug, put it in here, and we'll start running. Now I can show you it running, but I will cover it with a face cloth because I don't fancy getting it all around me. But you can see it on the other camera. And it comes out actually quite gracefully until the very end. Now as you can see, my jug is filling up. So I'm just going to transfer that into the basin. Okay. 
just let flow repressurize. Now I'll return to this first cold outlet at the end just to make sure as it is the first one that it is properly drained. But for now let's just drain the hot side. And again I'll just put the face cloth in front just in case there's any large splashes. And that's it drained. Now, um, just let me explain something which I think is quite important. Um, now that we have uh, drained this first hot outlet, remember the flow has pushed air and therefore water through the boiler. Now, you'll do this for all of the hot outlets, which in this property means one kitchen sink, two wash hand basins and a shower. And so this means that your boiler is now drained no less than four times. Now I'm referring to the fresh hot water. The central heating loop of water in the radiators will have antifreeze in it and it doesn't need to be drained. Now this is an important fact. First it means that your boiler is drained for winter without you having to touch it and second you're already halfway to cleansing the boiler which will save you roughly 15% on your gas bill. But I'll cover this really easy process in a later chapter in the DVD. So on that let's move off to the bathroom. So now that we're in the shower, this is where flow really proves its worth because by law there are non-return valves fitted in the shower. Now what this means is that water can come out the direction that it was intended but it can't be pushed back in reverse. Now the old antiquated method of pushing water back down through the system and out of the drain cocks underneath, it can't be used here. So an engineer will probably remove the shower mixer block here and leave it on the floor of the shower until spring. This obviously means that the water system and more than likely the property will be rendered useless for half of the year, which is a pity. But this isn't the case with flow, because flow will push the water out of the shower head following the natural direction of the water until there's nothing left but air. And also because there's no dismantling, you're free to enjoy your property throughout the winter months and then drain it when you're finished. So to drain the cold pipe, the first thing we need to do is turn the shower all the way to cold. Now you'll also want to lift the shower head down to stop any water running back into the mixer block. And then when you're ready, you simply turn on the shower. Now when the pipe is drained, just remember to turn the shower off again to seal the system once more. So the next thing we need to do is to turn the shower all the way to hot now the flow is repressurized and then turn the shower back on to drain the hot side. So let's do that. Okay, so we now want to drain the hot and cold outlets at the bathroom sink here, starting with the cold. So again, I would advise that you get a face cloth and hold it over the end of the tap of the faucet just to stop any water spraying around the units or yourself. Again. Now, if this was a mixer tap, you would just push it all the way over to the hot side and then lift to drain. But as it is, we just have a separate hot tap. So once again, the system's pressurized, so we can just open the hot tap using our face cloth. And again, I'm going to fill the jug. Now, some outlets you'll get a lot of water and some not so much. It really just depends on the layout of the property. So that's both pipes drained and we'll move on to the toilet now. Now something that's very commonly left out with older methods of draining is to drain the toilets and this can have devastating consequences in frost. Now there's a water inlet coming into the toilet at the right side here and that will have water trapped in there also. So we want to get that drained. So once flow has built back up with air pressure, what you want to do is lift the cistern lid off and push the ball cock down. Now you will hear a definite difference between the water coming out and then the air. So let's get that drained now. And that said, any water that was in this pipe has now been removed. 
Now we have an ensuite in this property with a toilet and a wash hand basin. So don't forget to drain the two sink outlets and the toilet, just following the same process as before. Now I'll cover the draining of other devices such as washing machines, dishwashers and garden irrigation etc. But I'll do that in another chapter in the DVD. Nevertheless it's important that we remember to drain any outside water outlets such as this one. So allow flow to build up pressure one last time and then just open the outlet itself. Now I'm not going to use uh, the basin because not everybody actually has an outside uh, tap and I'd rather uh, get an accurate amount in the basin itself. So I'm just going to use this bucket. So you can hear flow building up pressure in the background so we'll just open it up. So now that you've carried out the drain down it's important to carry out a little checklist to make sure that you've drained everything. So make sure that you've drained all the hot and cold taps in the kitchen, bathroom and en-suites and don't forget if you have any other outside taps or faucets you'll need to drain these also, just using the same process. Also remember to make sure that you've drained the shower by turning the temperature lever all the way to cold and then all the way to hot. Don't try to drain both at the same time by leaving the mixer in the middle as it's just not as effective. Also make sure that you drain all of the toilets by pushing the ball cocks down but don't flush them until the very end of the drain down process. Now one other thing you may wish to check is the drain valves underneath the park home. Now these are used in the old antiquated method and we don't need them. In the chapter for fitting flow I'll show you how to remove them but if they are still connected you'll need to drain them. Now there really shouldn't be an awful lot of water in there if any but for your first time out you might just want to drain these following the same process just to see if it's something you need to consider whenever you're doing a drain down. For peace of mind though I would consider disconnecting them altogether or at the very least foam lag them just to be sure. Now it's just something to bear in mind whenever you're draining these just make sure that you drain the fresh water drain valves and not the central heating ones as they do look the same. So please take a look at the chapter for fitting flow for more information on this and then of course you can speak to the manufacturer. Now if you have washing machines or dishwashers in the caravan or shed I'll cover those in a chapter back at the main menu but it's really really straightforward. Also once a year you might want to consider cleansing the boiler as this will save you up to 15% in your gas bill. Now you might think it sounds difficult but trust me you won't even have to open the cupboard door. Again I will cover that back at the main menu but it is worth looking at. This brings me on to another important point, how to leave your water system over the winter months. Well as you know we've been turning taps on and off throughout the drain down process and at this point all of those taps will be in the off position. If you're leaving the property over a cold spell it's important that you turn all of those taps back on again before you leave so that the pipes can breathe. Incidentally oxygen in the air circulating through the pipes is also a great steriliser. Now for the shower you just turn it on fully and move the temperature mixer to the middle and that will open both the hot and the cold pipes. Incidentally if you have any mixer taps or faucets in the property just simply lift the lever open and centre it. This again will open the hot and cold pipes. Also, and this is just through personal experience, if you do wish to use the property during winter, take a summer's day sometime and foam lag any bare pipes underneath the property because when you're staying there over the winter time these could freeze up and obviously we don't want that to happen. Also, and this happened to me once on a winter weekend, make sure that you turn your outside tap off when you arrive before you turn on the water. This will trap air in the pipe and it's a bit like creating an airlock. Um, so when it does come to draining it, there shouldn't be anything in there really except air. So now that everything is drained it's time to flush the toilets. Now doing this will reduce the amount of water in the cistern as it won't refill due to the water being turned off but it will also let the ball cock fall downwards and this will open the water inlet valve to allow air to circulate through the inlet pipe. Now if you do have anything else to drain remember to do it before the toilets but if you do make a mistake and accidentally flush before you finish draining down just simply fill the cistern up with a bucket of water to close the valve or simply wedge the ball cock up with a piece of stick or something um, which has the same effect. Finally what I would do is pour half a glass of antifreeze down into the cistern, another into the toilet bowl and any other plug holes around the property such as the shower and sinks etc. It doesn't have to be an expensive antifreeze, just something basic out of an auto parts store but I'll cover other winterizing techniques again back at the main menu. 
And that's it, that's the drain down carried out and that should keep you going through to the next season. And of course don't forget one of the great benefits of using flow is that you can take advantage of little winter getaways down at your own property. As a matter of fact when we use ours in winter it's usually very very cold inside so when we arrive we'd simply close all of the taps and then turn on the water and central heating. It's that quick we don't even turn the car off. We simply go and get some food while it heats up so by the time we get back it's nice and cosy. Then when it's time to leave we simply just drain it down again and leave all of the taps open. Now these skills are really straightforward and once you make a little checklist on a post-it note you can completely winterize your entire property in about 15 minutes. Now you saw me collect uh, water in the basin here as we went along. So for this property there's about four and three quarter litres of water here. In modern caravans you'll get anywhere between four to five litres depending on the water system layout. Obviously lodges and holiday homes will have slightly more. Now just so you know Flo is completely covered by our nine month money back guarantee and our five year parts warranty. So if you do encounter any little problems at least you know you're covered. So if there are any other pieces of advice that you need, please remember to go to the website listed below where you'll find our phone number and our email address so that you can contact us for support directly. And that's it, so I'll see you in the next chapter.